Most people use NATN at a very basic level, but NATN has a lot of hidden features that can completely change how you build automations. So today in this video, I'm going to share little known NATN tips and tricks that power users actually rely on. Things that actually save time, reduce complexity and make your workflow more powerful than ever. So if you already use NATN and want to level up, this video is for you. So let's quickly get started. So the first tip is self-hosting NATN. And it is actually a surprise to me that not a lot of people actually know that they have the option to self-host NATN. For starters, NATN is actually an open source project that means you have the option to self-host and start using NATN. So traditionally, you have two main ways to use NATN. The first option is pretty simple, obvious and straightforward which is to head over to NATN.io, sign up for a new account and you can start using it instantly. But the problem is that NATN is actually paid and they don't even have a free plan and the paid plan starts at 20 euros a month or 2000 rupees even then you have all these limits in here. As you can see we can only have like one shared project, 5 concurrent execution and also 50 AI workflow builder credits. And once you exhaust this limit well then you'll have to upgrade to the next plan which is at 50 euros per month and then 667 euros a month right. But did you know that you can actually self host NATN and start using it for a fraction of the cost. For example if I head over to hostinger.com or again you can click the link in the description below and if I go to services I can find an option that says self hosted NATN and if I click on the same. I can now instantly self-host NATN in just a single click and as you can see plan starts at just 319 rupees so as opposed to using it via NATN.io in which you will have to pay 2000 rupees now you only need to pay like 319 rupees per month and even then you don't really have any limits you get unlimited workflows unlimited concurrent executions and pretty much no limit whatsoever. And again, Hostinger is also now running a new year sale so you can actually make use of this deal to save even more money. And now just as to show you a demo, here I'll go with the KVM2 plan. So all I have to do is to click on this choose plan button right here. And as you can see, the new year sale offer is already live and I can find all these offer letter informations in here. But if you use the coupon that is Astro, you will get instant 10% discount on top of all these offers. So as you can see, here we have 10% discount applied. Or if you use the coupon that is Astro15, and if I hit apply, as you can see, instant 15% discount, right? And next up, you can scroll down and select the server location that is closest to you. So wherever you are, you can go ahead and select a server location. And after that, the most important thing to do is that you need to select the operating system as NATN. In most cases, it will be automatically selected for you. And now you can go ahead and make the payment. And once you complete the purchase, if you head over to the VPS section, as you can see here I already have a self-hosted version of NATN app and running. And if I click on this manage button and if I click on manage app, so just like that I have my self-hosted version of NATN up and live. It is as easy as that. So the second tip is that now you can use NATN automations and workflows as APIs or backends for apps that you built. For example, here I have opened up Lovable and this right here is a very simple app that I built just as to demonstrate how it actually works. And as you can see, it says validate your startup idea in seconds. And basically how this app works is that the user can go ahead and enter their startup idea in here and click on the analyze button. And within seconds, the app will display like AI's analysis as to how good of a you know startup idea is that and again the AI will give its honest thought. And you know what? The core functionality of this app is built using NATN. And yes, you heard that correct. So this right here is a symbol NATN automation that I created, which actually starts with the webhook. So I added a webhook node. So if I click on plus and if I search for webhook, as you can see here, we have the webhook node and that is what I have added in here. And towards the end, I added the respond to webhook node. And in the center, we also have a AI agent or let's say a AI chat model, right? And now it starts with the webhook and here we can find the URL. So it is a post method and everything, right? Now whatever be that the webhook receives like a text, it actually goes to a open AI chat model. So in this case, GPT 4.1 mini is the model that we are using. And here we have a master prompt entered in here, right? And towards the end, we actually pass whatever idea the user enters in here. Okay. And after that, after processing or let's say after open AI returns the response or gives its answer, we'll just respond back to the webhook. That is, we just go ahead and display all of that content in here. So basically, to put it in simple terms, I'm using this as an API endpoint for my app that I built on Lovable. So what I did is that I opened up the webhook node and I copied this URL, that is the webhook URL. And after that, I opened up Lovable and I gave a prompt something like this. So first of all, I pasted the webhook URL and I told 
The above given is the API endpoint which we need to make a request with the idea that the user enters and the webhook or let's say the API will respond back with the analysis result and we need to display neatly display the same in our app. And I also mentioned the input format and also the output format. Okay, and right now this is actually functional. So maybe I can show you it in action. So first of all, I'll click on this execute workflow option. And as you can see, it says waiting for you to call the test URL. Now I can actually use the app. Maybe I can open it up in a new tab. And as soon as I enter a startup idea in here and click on the analyze idea button, well, it actually sends it to this uh, automation and the automation will be active and process the request with open AI and then gets the response. And again, we respond back to the webhook. So in this case, let's just go ahead and say an AI powered CRM platform. So this right here is my startup idea. And as soon as I click on the analyze idea button, as you can see, our webhook is in action. So let's wait for it. So as soon as the processing is complete, our webhook or let's say the automation that we created will send the response back to the app. And there you go. Here we already have, and this is the output, right? And again, if I open the response to webhook node right here, as you can see, this right here is the response. And that is exactly what we see in here. Now, just as to show you a demo here, I used a simple, like a very simple automation. But the point here is that you can actually create various automations and use it as API endpoints for any apps you build using Laubel, Cursor, Bolt, or any other AI coding tools for that matter. So the third is using open router for using various AI models right inside of your automation. So here I have opened up uh, Nitin and I can create a sample workflow. And if I, let's say, add a trigger, and after that, let's say I want to use some sort of AI models inside of my automation. Well, in that case, what I usually do is that I click on the AI option right here. And again, you have the option to use Anthropy, Google Gemini, Open AI. Or if I click on AI agent and if I click on the chat model option right here, as you can see, we have a bunch of different service providers in here. Now, there's no issue using it this way. If you want to, you can actually go ahead and grab your open AI API key or let's say Anthropic API key and instantly start using the same. But the problem here is that if you want to, let's say, use Anthropic API key or let's say a model from Anthropic, well, in that case, you'll have to create an account on Anthropic.com, their API platform, and then load some credits, add your credit card. And only after that, you'll be able to use the Anthropic API model, right? And after that, let's say you want to use open AI API. Now in that case, you'll have to create an account on platform.openai.com and again, obviously add credits, create API keys. And again, you'll be able to use open AI AI models. Similar is the case with Google AI Studio. Well, if you want to use Gemini AI models, well, you will have to create an account on astudio.google.com, grab your API key, and after that, you can use it. Now, apart from Gemini, Anthropic, and OpenAI, we also have a bunch of other AI providers like, let's say, Mistral, DeepSeek, you know, there are a lot of different models. Now, every time you want to switch and use a different AI model, well, you will have to go to their platform, create a new account, load credits, add your credit cards, and get the API key. Well, as opposed to that, if you're actually about to use Open Router, you actually don't have to do any of this. You only have to add credits once, you only have to add your credit card once, but you will be able to use pretty much any AI model that you want. So as you can see, it says the unified interface for LLMs. And if you want to use open router, well, all you have to do is to head over to openrouter.ai and you can go ahead and sign up for a new account. So in this case, I have already added some credits to my open router account. And as you can see, I have around $2 balance. But the good thing is that if I go to the model section right here, I'll be able to find AI models from all leading providers like, like ByteDance, Minimax, ZAI, Gemini, when we have Anthropic, for example, if I search for that in here, as you can see, here we have Anthropic, here we have OpenAI, we have Gemini, and if I open an automation, and if I click on this chat model, if I scroll down, I'll be able to find an option that says open router chat model. And if I click on the same, now, if I click on this drop down menu right here, as you can see, I'll be able to use all these AI models from Mistral, OpenAI, Grog, NVIDIA, Meta, uh, DeepSeek, Anthropic, Alibaba, you name it. Pretty much all the AI models that are available in the market right now, well, all of them are available in Open Router. So I only need to generate the API key once so I can go to the key section and then I can create a key, copy the same, head back and I can add the credential in here. And once I configure Open Router once, every time I want to switch and use a different model. For example, let's say I've been building uh, automation and I was using, let's say, um, Open AI's GPT 4.1 mini model. Next up, I thought, well, I want to use Opus 4.5. Well, in that case, normally I'll have to go ahead and create an Anthropic API account and then grab all the API keys and then I'll have to reroute everything, right? But in this case, all I have to do is to simply search for Opus 4.5 
and that's it and that's the only change that i'll have to do so if you use any sort of ai models inside of your automation it is always the best option to use it via open router and not just that if i head over to credits and if i click on view usage button right here I'll be able to find all the details as to what AI models did I use, how much tokens did it take, what is the speed, how much did it cost. I can find all this information. And on top of all that, we also have a bunch of different free AI models right inside of Open Router. And if you're planning to use some sort of AI models inside of your automation, well, it would be a good option to consider Open Router. Number four is using AI to create NATN automations and workflows. And yes, you heard that correct. You can now use ChatGPT or Cloud to create NATN workflows. And let me show you how to do the same. For example, here I have opened up chat GPT and I can give a prompt something like this. It says create an NATN automation JSON that does this. When a webhook receives a text message, the text is sent to open AI to get a short motivational version of the message and the result is returned as the webhook response. Use the open AI and webhook nodes only. Provide the JSON workflow export so I can import it in NATN. So this right here is the prompt and if I want to, I can either provide it in Cloud or let's say in chat GPT and I can click on the send button right here. So as you can see, Cloud started writing the automations in here. That is the JSON file for the automation. And similar is the case with ChatGPT. So let me wait for it to complete. So there you go. The NATN automation is now ready. And here we have the JSON code that we need to use. Well, all I have to do is to copy the code, just like this, copy the same. And after that, I can head back to NATN and I'll create a new workflow. And I can simply paste the same in here and Okay, so open AI account is already, you know, connected. And just like that, I just copied the JSON that is created by uh, ChatGPT and I pasted the same in here. And here I have a very simple and basic NATN automation. So to use it, all I have to do is to call it with some sort of message like this. And to test it out, maybe I can open the Rackbin platform. And after that, I'll put body, JSON and paste the format that is exactly what the AI gave me. I feel tired and unmotivated today and after that I can simply go ahead and grab my URL that is the webhook URL and then paste the same in here and next up I can execute the workflow and moment of truth if I click on send there you go our NATN automation is in action so let's wait for it hopefully it goes through so there you go it says workflow executed successfully and if I head back I can now find the response back in here and just like that by giving a simple prompt to cloud or chat gpt i was able to create a nat automation and well you can just copy this code returned by ai and then paste it in here and you can create a nat automation very quickly and in many cases it won't actually work in the first try itself well in that case you'll have to give follow -up prompt and copy the error code and pass it to ai and fix it but any which ways you have the option to create nat automations or part of nat automations using ai chatbots like chat GPT or cloud. The fifth is using ready-made NATN automation templates. Well, in most cases, you don't actually have to start your workflows from scratch. So most people, when they want to create a new automation, what they do is that they go ahead and create a new workflow and then go ahead and start adding all these nodes manually. And if, the, if you want to create, let's say a complex one, it will take hours for you to come up with a automation. Well, in most cases, you don't really have to do that. So here I'm giving some resources. The first one is that nhn.io slash workflows. This writer is the official website of N8N. -N. And the thing is that you can find well over 7,702 workflow automation templates in here. And most of them are free. And in just a single click, you can instantly start using the same. And this writer is a GitHub repo with over 5,000 plus N8N -N automations. And this writer is yet another one. And it has well over 4,300 N8N -N automations. Now, for example, let's say I want to use uh, automation from this uh, official workflows repository from NATN, something related to AI. So I can search for AI. And here I have around 3,700 plus AI related workflows. For example, let me say I want to use this one. Well, in that case, all I have to do is to select the automation just like this. And as you can see here, we already find a use for free button and I can find a preview of the automation in here and I can find all details as to how it works, what it do and you know you can find pretty much all the details about this automation in here now if i want to instantly start using the same in just a single click well all i have to do is to click on this button that says use for free and now i can simply click on this option right here that says copy template to clipboard and then i can simply hit Control v or command v and there you go the same automation is now pasted and i can go ahead and add all those credentials and instantly start using the same or better yet, you can click on this button right here that says import template and directly add the same to your NATN 
workflow and you'll be able to add all the credentials right from here and you can click on this continue button and again instantly start using the NATN automation. And next step, let's just say you're planning to use a automation from this GitHub repo. Well, in that case, let me just go ahead and open one of them. Let's say forms and surveys and let's say this one right here. Well, all I have to do is to click on this button right here that says copy, copy row file and I can delete all of that in here and simply hit control V or command V and there you go. The same is now pasted in here. So this right here is a pretty complex NATN automation and think about how much time will it take for me to manually create it. In this case, I just got a public template. I pasted the same and I can instantly start using the same. And depending on your use case, you can manually go ahead and make changes and customize it and use it however you want to. So that is yet another tip. The next tip is the usage of code node right inside of NATN. So if I open a workflow and if I click on this plus button and if I search for code, I can now find a node that says run custom JavaScript or Python code. And the thing is that not a lot of people are actually using this code node. They try to do everything manually and unnecessarily make their automation way too complex. Well, you don't really have to do that. I know just as to show you an example, here I have opened up, let's say a code node and I added some JavaScript code in here. For example, this right here is a block of JavaScript code and all I have to do is to paste the same in here. And as soon as I execute the same, well, I have the output in here, right? And if I had to do the exact same thing only using nodes in this workflow, it will take at least like 10 to 15 extra nodes just as to do this one thing that this code node was able to do. Well, I didn't have to do any of that. That's because I directly used the code node and I wrote the JavaScript in here. For simple things, you can actually go ahead and use code node and it will actually make your workflow less complex. And also it will be a good idea to use code node in many different cases. And the good thing is that for many use cases, you can actually use chat GPT or Claude and it can give you the JavaScript code that you'll have to use within your NATN automation. And you can copy the same, add a code node and simply add it in here and you should be good to go. And the last tip is to use the pin option right inside of any NATN workflow. For example, this right here is a NATN workflow, right? And now maybe I can go ahead and execute this workflow and maybe I can try an AI powered influencer marketing platform. And I click on the analyze idea button right here. And as you can see, our automation is in progress. And now just for example, I use this one right here. And now let's say you are actually adding even more nodes to this automation right here and you're testing it out. Well, in this case, we are just using a simple chat model from OpenAI and it is not that expensive. Well, let's assume you're actually creating videos using VO 3.1 or let's say Sora pro model, right? And for each generation, it will cost you around $1. So every time you want to test something in this particular workflow, well, you'll have to keep running it again and again and again, and again, you'll be burning a lot of credits. Well, the good news is that after running a workflow, you can right click and you'll find an option that says pin. And if you click on the same, the data for this node will be pinned in here. And if I double click on the same to open it up, as you can see, the data is pinned and it says the data is pinned for test execution. And again, if I click on this one right here, well, I can click on this pin button right here and whatever data that we have in here will be pinned. And every time you actually execute this workflow, only this part of the workflow will be executed. That means wherever we have pinned data, all these nodes will be skipped and whatever data that we already have in those nodes will be used as input. So in this case, here we have a simple text response node, right? Now in this case, let's assume it was a uh, node that was actually using let's say VO 3.1 to create a video and it will cost me let's say one dollar per creation. Now in that case I can actually pin that and after that every time I click on execute workflow everything until this point will be automatically stored like all the data will be stored in here already and only nodes that comes after this section right here will be executed and this way I'll be able to save a lot of time and also money and that is also one more underrated feature that not a lot of people actually know. So these are some interesting NATN tips and tricks that you must know if you want to become a power user. So in this video, I shared about six or seven different tips that you can actually use whenever you're using NATN and you can thank me later. And again, make sure to click the link in the description below if you want to self-host NATN for, you know, practically fraction of the cost of using NATN from NATN.io directly from Hostinger. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in today's video. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If yes, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.